We got this email from Martha about climate change. She wrote, it seems to me that one of the logical steps that should be taken is to put people back in their houses again and work from home because it was clear that the CO2 levels in the big cities went down significantly during the first part of the pandemic when everybody was forced off the streets. There were no cars and there was no commuting and the airlines were quiet. I got to tell you, I remember that, Martha, and I think you're right. The CO2 seemed like it did drop in those first few months of the lockdown. So would it help if we all worked from home again? Let's bring in our expert, Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino. What do you think? It did drop. You're right. And Martha's right about that. If you recall, suddenly um, they were seeing like the mountains in Los Angeles and, and more like places like uh, Beijing. Yeah, they could see the mountain ranges where they hadn't in a long, long time. But it is a pretty complex problem. So mm -hmm. I'm going to show you one of the graphics I showed you back then during the pandemic. And this is satellite based data on not CO2, but a pollutant nitrogen dioxide and again this was a fairly immediate turnaround by some of the nasa satellites showing the big decrease in northern china around beijing when the lockdown happens so you may think that's fantastic and it was fantastic co2 is a little bit harder to measure um, we do measure it it is measured by satellites but it took a little more time for scientists to kind of tease that one out and there was a decrease they measured about a, a 15 to 20 percent decrease in april of 2020 and for the first four months of 2020 january through april about a seven percent decrease worldwide in co2 however it's not quite that simple this is an animation from nasa where it's blue that's where co2 was less where it's orange that's where co2 was more the problem with this is it's a very complicated relationship between carbon dioxide in vegetation on our planet. It's called the atmosphere vegetation carbon exchange, and it really makes it difficult to tease out the signal as to what the reduction was. So what the NASA scientists did is they said, okay, let's take the measurement from April of 2020 and compare that on modeled baseline data, because obviously we didn't, we didn't know, you couldn't measure what it was like normally because it wasn't normal, right? So they had to model what the normal was and then compare the two. See, it's getting complicated already. But what they did discover was a couple things here. First of all, the decrease from COVID, it is uncertain because the attribution is so difficult as I've been trying to explain. And one of the reasons why is this, carbon dioxide stays in our atmosphere for hundreds of years, which is part of the climate change problem, right? It just lasts a really, really long time. So even as, uh, was it Martha, suggests, if we were to shut everything down right now, there's something called commitment warming. We've already pumped so much CO2 into the atmosphere, we're committed to that much warming, even if everything that produced CO2 stopped right now. It's hard to separate the long-term changes from the short-term changes. So again, we've been putting carbon dioxide in the atmosphere for hundreds of years. That short-term decrease because of COVID, it's hard to separate out that signal. NASA scientists work on that, but it's a very complex problem. It requires some of their best uh, supercomputing and modeling that they have. And climate variability has a strong influence on, again, that vegetation atmosphere exchange of carbon. So I know that's a lot to kind of take in. And think about it this way, though, uh, everything was shut down, right? I mean, we're still suffering supply chain issues because of that. Is it realistic to shut everything down and shut everybody in? That's that's a question you would have to ask yourself. But it did help in the short term, whether it helped long term. We're not seeing that the CO2 graph from Mauna Loa in Hawaii, which is one of our best measurements of carbon dioxide around the planet, still going up and it's still way higher than it's been in millions of years. On a little more positive note, we are talking about the influence that solar panels or even just, you know, solar windows can have on the energy budget of the atmosphere, right? And this is just the last couple days for Portland. Solar electric electricity generated by solar power, right? Look at this. Today, the no, uh, November 8th, we could have charged 115 million smartphones with the energy created and produced by solar power today. So that's a lot of energy that we produce by solar and energy. Here's for Oregon from wind energy, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, look at this, the amount of CO2 avoided by going to uh, carbonless sources of energy is pretty profound. Back to you, Pat. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why he's the best in the city. Thank you, Matt. You bet.